Hi, I'm Honey Davenport, and you are watching Sickening Drag Performances. Don't forget to like and subscribe. Hey everyone, welcome back to Sickening Spotlight. It is a lovely day here at Sickening Drag Performances. I'm your host, uh, Reed. You can find me on all my social media at Electric Reed, Snapchat, Facebook, Instagram, LinkedIn, if you're crazy. Uh, this is Sickening Drag Performances. We are a LGBT queer and drag artist focused brands and we help artists uh, reach their cinematic and professional vision by doing videography, photography, and web designs for all of the lovely entertainers that are in this lovely world. Um, once again, this is Sickening Spotlight. This is episode 11, I believe. We have uh, Ghost Electra joining us today. Um, I want to go ahead and shout out our new service, uh, Sickening Sites, where um, you can get your own professional drag artist website in 72 hours or less for as little as your last Uber Eats order. So that's about $30. Um, if you are interested in doing that, please head over to Sickening Drag Performances, click on Get My Drag Website, and fill out the form. And you can see a bunch of other lovely people we've created sites for, like Miss Toto and Venus Envy from Orlando, Florida. Without further ado, let's go ahead and welcome our guest for today, Miss Ghost Electra. Hi. Hi. Hello. How are you? Good. How are you? Oh, you know, we are doing the best we can during quarantine. I'm going to adjust. Girl, same here. I love this look, this hair. You always have the most creative yeah. shapes, I think. Um, Thank you. This is uh, Marco from Milan. Okay, wait, let me shut off. I'm going to shut the window because the bells are ringing right now. It's 6 p.m. Okay. Because the Christians need to know they've got to go to church, you know? Right. Very you How are you? I'm doing good. You know, um, I moved um, up the coast a little bit. I'm in Pennsylvania now, which is uh, halfway between South Carolina and New York where I was. Um, uh -huh. um, I moved for a job and then, um, the day I actually moved here, the government, uh, here shut everything down. <clears throat> so all of my like work just fell out from underneath everything. Um, so I've been just kind of chilling out for the, for the month and doing these spotlights and, um, really getting like digging deep into like what you guys are doing as like artists, um, and mm -hmm. doing a lot of stuff. So how have you, uh, so uh, besides Instagram, where can they find you? I hear you have a new YouTube channel, is that correct? Yeah, yeah. so basically during this confinement, I think it really gave me time to work on what I've been planning on doing for so long, which is my YouTube channel, so they can find me on YouTube. I post videos twice a week. That's something literally for seven months, maybe, I was sitting on a studio backdrop. I had everything mm -hmm. except, I guess, the, I don't know, I was just procrastinating. So I right. always had excuses as to why I couldn't do it. And then now we're here, I'm stuck at home, and I'm part of a risk group because I have, like, very heavy has asthma. So... I can't be just taking any risks. So I've been literally locked inside this apartment pretty much 24 seven, except to go grocery shopping. Um, and even then we have masks. Um, right. So it really pushed me to be like, okay, you know what? I'm gonna finally do this and yeah, let's get started. So they can find me on YouTube. I post, I guess like makeup and drag related content and also vlogs and stuff. So pretty much everything. I have this series called Mop or Drop, which is basically fashion photo review, except okay. I actually talk about fashion because fashion photo review girl now it's just like mop drop and then them just talking shit like nonsense yeah. you know so yeah i actually like try and talk about fashion about shapes fabrics colors and everything and okay. judge those so so yeah okay. and then instagram okay cool so um mm -hmm. so is that like Besides the YouTube content, you know, how have you been keeping busy during the past uh, month or two? Because, I mean, obviously, I mean, you can only create, you know, so much content per day before you kind of go crazy. So what else have you been up to? I mean, I'll be honest with you. Literally, YouTube is what I've been doing since I got back. Um, I, I... Well, first of all, when I got back here, I started um, editing my vlogs from my trip to Asia because, you know, when all okay. this happened, 
stuck in Asia. I was like literally stuck in Thailand with no way out and it was a big struggle. So when I got back here, I started working on that. And literally every day since I've been here, I've been either editing vlogs or filming Mop or Drop or editing Mop or Drop. I've also been doing digital drag shows. So right. getting in, but I have, I was telling my boyfriend yesterday, I haven't had one day to like play PS4 and just chill since I've been back and it's been like two months. So I'm not complaining, you know, at least yeah. I'm keeping busy. Like he's having a hard time. He's telling me that, you know, it, it's starting to weigh on him. And I'm like, I, I haven't seen the months fly by. Literally, I've been like doing drag, filming content, having fun. So, I mean, I know it's going to grow tiresome eventually. Like I'm going to be like, I need to get the fuck out of here and go get wasted. Yeah. But <laughs> for now, yeah. And I mean, I'll say we're lucky here in Berlin because... Um, we have a really big apartment. It's very sunny. Like we have literally windows everywhere. So um, sometimes we're in a living room and it feels like we're in our the park across the street. Sure. And Berlin is just very much like open. So there's lots of trees. I mean, it sounds kind of silly, but like I remember like my friends are kind of struggling back in Paris where I used to live where I'm from originally because people are on top of each other. So they're kind of forced to be on lockdown like they're giving fines to people that walk out without like a written oh, yeah. authorization yeah you need like a written document like stating on your in behalf of your company or whatever that you're going out for this or you're walking your dog and they're finding you if you're walking out without these here in berlin people are chill so it's like i've been <laughs> taking walks in the park and enjoying the weather so oh my gosh been, okay so, um, so like, obviously the days are different now because you're not like going to perform or anything like that. No. Um, but like now that there are so many performers taking their work online, how do you think this will affect uh, drag uh, and our industry in the long run? Uh, I mean, I don't really know. The thing is like, what, what I really don't understand, like I know right now digital drag shows are re working really well, but I think like eventually the people that are tipping us, they're also struggling with money. You know what I mean? Yeah. So like it's really going to last for so long and I've seen it already happen. Like, you know, I've done several um, digital drag shows and the first one that I did, it was just brand new and people were like, yes, and tipping me. And now it's like people are also struggling. They need to pay rent. So it's it's kind of hard. So I, I think it's a good thing in the sense that I think a lot of queens are trying to push themselves to be creative. Like, I know sure. I've, like, even thought about producing, like, a short film or, you know what I mean? Like, because then you produce, like, a three-minute performance, like, for an online drag show. And, and then you're like, oh, this is fun. So, you know, I've been thinking about, like, producing a short movie or something. And I think, like, a lot of queens are also thinking about that. Girl, I've seen crazy videos online. Like, yeah. those drag are so creative it's insane mm -hmm. so it's really exciting and i think when this is all resolved and we open the bars i think a lot of performers which is something we've seen in europe i mean you and i have talked about this before um that the you know european drag scene is much like based on storytelling and visuals and props more right. than just thinking and dipping and you know so i think maybe americans are also going to take that away from this like oh you know what i really want like nice visuals to go with my performance yeah. so they're i can do more than just work. lip sync and you know yeah. do a little twirl i can actually do like more artful and yeah stuff like that yeah and i think a lot of people like i know louisiana purchase from dragula she also um, posted about that on Facebook that she learned how to use um, iMovie, which we all know is not the best movie editing software, but it's still better than nothing. And she's been producing like really cool content. So a lot of people, me included, were like forced to look at like different ways of expressing ourselves and learning new skills, which right. hopefully will also apply in the future. Now, I mean, I don't know like what's going to happen with you guys in the US, but I know in Germany, we're not going to open neither bars or clubs for another six months. So right. we're locked until the end of the year, that's, you know? That's very similar to what we're having here. Like uh, they're doing staggered openings for different types yeah. of businesses, but it's mm -hmm. already been very clear that the bars and the social like stuff is going to be like the last thing on the list to open. So yeah. that's also like, sure. well, we have to still kind of do this for until that happens. So yeah, it's definitely a little bit more difficult in that way that, Society is 
working again, but like the bars still aren't open. So yeah, it's like, you know. Um, okay. So I guess as someone who may be more of an influencer in the community, do you think, how do you think this is affecting artists who aren't as active on socials um, as far as their ability to perform and get work? Yeah, I mean, for sure. I mean, I think, I don't know if like social media, I think there's like two different kinds of queens. There's the ones that are like, in, like, in, like, how to say that without sounding obnoxious. Internet queen? Big, big on social media, you know? And then there's those that are not necessarily big on social media, but are very influential in their own scene. I have a few in mind here that, you know, they some of them don't even have Instagram or they don't really care for it, but they're like performing five times a week here in Berlin. So I think those girls, they're doing fine still because they do have a lot of people like following and supporting them. So they still do like digital drag shows, although they don't necessarily promote it on social media like I would. Mm -hmm. um, but I think people that are in between are definitely gonna eventually, I'm thinking maybe go back to a normal day job. Like I know Reefy Royalty was posting about that because she, um, you know, she lives in New York and mm -hmm. the rent is and she was living from her drag and and she had maybe had not saved enough money and those those kind of queens are even me I mean okay I'm gonna be honest like I, I'm lucky enough that I had saved quite a lot of money because I always prepare for everything um, and I live in a really cheap city like Berlin so I think I'll be fine I mean if this lasts until December I'll be fine if this lasts more I'm gonna have to go back to what I was doing before drag as well uh, but I think a lot of girls that were counting on drag and maybe have not saved the money, um, have been saving it all, spending it on wigs and stuff, some of them might have to go back to some yeah, kind of some sort of, yeah, serving or, or retail or something. Yeah, but then again, it's like, it's like there's a lot of stores that are closing down and some of them for good. So it's like, even if they want to find a new job back in like retail or something, can they even find something? Like it's gonna be really hard because yeah. there's a, a lot of restaurants and bars and stores that have closed forever because they just couldn't even handle the crisis. Right. And being closed so, yeah, without really any really customers hard. coming through. Yeah, exactly. I mean, I've seen like literally some some restaurants and stores around my apartment that said, you know, they try to keep open, but then customers weren't coming in and they couldn't pay their bills and now they're gone forever. They had to, there's a bunch of clubs here, like some of the biggest clubs in Berlin, you know, party is like the main source of money here in Germany. Well, in Berlin at least. So I've like a lot of clubs are like really struggling. So sorry, I'm like adjusting my lighting. <laughs> Um, so yeah, I, I really feel like a lot of queer artists, we were really lucky in a sense that we could make a living from this. And a lot of people maybe, like you said, that are not necessarily either big on in their scene or on social media, they're, they're right. not going to be able to live from their art and they're going to have to find a job, a day job, you know? Yeah. Okay. So like how, um, so when you are gonna when you're doing these live shows and stuff what sort of content are you um doing for them like are you doing more performance are you doing more like um spoken word like um i don't know if you do i don't know if you sing or anything like that um i don't wait is my lighting blinking it looks weird anyway um I don't sing, no, I lip sync. And when I do digital drag shows, yeah, I just usually do lip syncing, but I guess I do a little bit more like storytelling than I would live. Like I, you know, you, you, again, you have the freedom of being a little bit more creative. Right. So uh, like, I know I was just watching the, cause I have a like digital drag show tonight, by the way, little plug uh, in oh, two no, hours. Stuff, girl. That's what we're here yeah. for. Um, yeah, so in two hours, I'm going to be hosting and performing at a dig digital drag show. So from 8 p.m. to 1 a.m. Um, Berlin slash Paris time. Um, and I've just watched the numbers of some of the girls. And it's like a basically a short movie, except they're lip syncing to a song. But one of them is like, she literally did like a whole movie. It's like she, oh, wow. she tells a story. Like, it's insane. So... Yeah, I mean, mainly it's lip syncs, but I feel like there's a lot more that goes into it. You know, there's like mood setting and like set setting. Um, and Lighting it. Yeah, so, huh? Lighting it. 
Yeah, exactly. <laughs> um, so, I mean, yeah, but personally, I've only done two digital numbers. One of them um, where basically I do fire, like I do a fire trick. And well, basically, I start in my living room and then I run around my building and walk out across the street <laughs> to the park and light myself on fire. Um, and yeah, basically, that's pretty much like what I do. But I will say, like, during these times, I'll, I'm down to like host my own shows, but I don't think I'll be doing a lot of like digital performances. Yeah. It's a lot of work for, I do appreciate anyone who tips and believe me, last time we did Tech Noir, which is the show we're having tonight, we had a lot of people tip and I'm really grateful. Like every queen made not a lot of money, but honestly, Berlin doesn't pay well. So they made pretty much like almost what they would have made at the club, which is again, a third of what the queens make in the US, believe me, but still very grateful. Um, but when you think about it, like I did my makeup for three hours and I filmed for like six hours, I edited for eight hours. Oh girl, yeah. So girl, that's a lot. <laughs> yeah, it's a lot of work. Yeah, because if you want to, you want to make sure, you know, you got several shots and, and you want to make sure you, yeah, it's a lot of work for sure. I mean, again, it's like a short movie of so like wait, five how, minutes. How, so you're pretty new to editing, correct? Girl, yeah. Okay. <laughs> I was like, eight hours of editing? What is, you must be editing a feature film, girl. Um, I mean, I don't know, really. Like, well, I guess, it takes, I, again, I guess it's because they need to It takes me about, it takes me um, maybe like a couple of hours to shoot uh, like a full on music video if it's just one location. And then it takes me probably a total of um, five or six hours to edit it. Um, and that's like, yeah, but the, um, that's what you do for a living, basically. No, like, I, so I actually do like lighting in the in the entertainment, like uh, theatrical business. So uh -huh. that's what my degree is in. I this whole sickening drag thing is just really a really big passion of mine. Um, uh -huh. And so um, the the editing I've been editing for like four or five years. Yes. Um, yeah, so I started on Adobe Premiere, and then I moved over to Final Cut. Um, but yeah, I still like my editing skills are comparatively basic to like someone who does it for a living. If that well, makes sense. mine are mine are even beyond basic compared to you. I'm assuming. So I well, mean, I'm editing you know, like, my movie. Uh, I'm gonna give you my number, and you can Facetime me anytime with questions because I'd love to help well, you make you. your product better. Always. Thank you. Um, yeah, you know, I, I was actually like before all of this happened, a friend of mine who is like a cinematographer. He was gonna teach me how to use Premiere. Uh, so we were gonna spend like a few days like actually learning, mm -hmm. except now we can't. So I had to like figure out iMovie. Yes, I edit on iMovie, I know. Um, but you know, so it's, that's why it takes me six, eight hours because I, I'm i just still learning. So when I first edited my first Mop or Drop video, I, I think it took me a good six hours to edit like, um, like a 12 minute video, which when you think about it is fucking crazy. Yeah. Now, if it's a 12 minute video, I'm gonna, like in two hours, I'm done. But you know, sometimes Drag Race has like four, 40 looks in one episode. So I have to like go through all of them, but yeah. So, but I am grateful that, you know, this really forced me to stick my head out of my ass and be like, okay, let's, <laughs> let's do this. Let's learn let's editing do and some stuff, yeah. Exactly. Yeah. And I'm again, I'm really like for now, I haven't really felt I will say I'm like my boyfriend makes fun of me because if I'm not like traveling to perform across the world, um, <laughs> I'm Casual. staying home. I know, right? Mm, you know, uh, I'm staying home playing PS4 all day. So I'm kind of used to being here all day doing pretty much nothing and procrastinating. Right. So I haven't really felt a difference, except yes, I'm not traveling, but I'm still doing drugs, so it kind of feels the same. And in the meantime, I'm still learning skills, editing stuff and having fun. So yeah, I mean, again, I feel really lucky. I know a lot of girls are struggling. I, am, I was talking to a few girls who um, made some financial aid from, from uh, Voss events, from Work the World. And, you know, it's, yeah, I mean, the financial aid is great and they, they're able to pay their rent, but they're, now that they know the clubs are not gonna open for a while, some of them are thinking about, yeah, going back to work. I mean, it's yeah. a different kind of work. Um, so you mentioned um, that Berlin has one of the more uh, Berlin is more of a cheap city to live in, I guess, but you also oh, yeah. mentioned that you have experience performing 
in not just Berlin, but um, uh, Paris and, and other parts of Europe. So how does like, does like, obviously I think they, the drag has its own separate kind of subcultures in Europe. Yeah. So like, can you explain a little bit uh, from someone who's never experienced that firsthand? I've only, I've only ever met one queen from uh, Copenhagen um, and I, I'm a little bit more familiar with like the Copenhagen scene, but that's obviously a lot different. So um, can you talk about like how the drag culture is just in general in Europe and specifically between like Berlin and like Paris, yeah. and, like wherever else you've performed? Yeah, I mean, the scene is really, like, I think a lot of American queens don't realize unless they've traveled, it's really big. Like, Drag Race has, had like, created waves all over the world. So, um, I mean, I can only speak for Berlin and Paris because I'm from Paris originally and I live in Berlin, but it's, it's huge. I mean, each city has their different kind of type of drag, I will say. Uh, Berlin is more, like, kind of unpolished, trashy, but in a good way. Like anyone okay. can do drag. Yeah, like anyone can do drag. It's very inclusive of like women, trans women, trans people in general, non-binary folks. Like it's very much like open stage. Anyone can do drag and, but at also at, at a point where, and that's I guess why I don't really perform in Berlin much is because um, then I guess like some dude in a shake and go wig and an eyeliner is a drag queen. So it's kind of hard for someone who spent so much money, time and effort into my craft yeah. to make a living from it, you know, but I do enjoy it. It's very, very inclusive in Paris, I guess is not that inclusive, but it's very polished. I mean, I don't know if you know some Paris queens, but to me, like Paris is one of the best drag in the world in, well, in Europe, at least. Okay. And I'm not saying that to them from there, because believe me, I don't live there, so I, I hate the city. But to me, Paris is the Chicago of of Fran of Europe. You know what I mean? Like yeah. the drag is like top notch. So yeah. Anyway, so it's again, there's a lot of queens that do drag for a living, especially these past years. A lot of queens have quit their job to do drag for a living, and they're also kind of struggling and having to yeah find a solution but yeah I mean I wish a lot of Americans knew more about European drag because to me it's like it's it's a whole different ballpark to me it's it's like you know when I first performed in the U.S. I was really taken aback because I had this whole number planned with I think the first time I performed maybe it wasn't the first time but like the like the very like one of the biggest shows that I've done for the first time was uh, Hamburger Mary's okay and I was going to do cell block tango. And basically what I do is I have like several wigs stacked on top of each other and like several outfits and I do reveals. And every time I'm a different woman, cause you know, it's like five women lip syncing and they're telling their stories. So I had this whole thing like choreography and stuff. And then no, like it's like people in the U S yeah. they just thing and they go around and collect them tips. And that's it. So I remember I was like really taken aback because it was people waving their tips at me. And again, I'm not complaining. Uh, yeah. And then I was just like I going imagine, around. Like, I can imagine your first time performing in the U.S., especially in a place like uh, Hamburger Mary's. It, yeah. What it must have felt very weird to have people like waving money at you because I think oh, yeah. that's not something that ever happened at all in Europe. No, I mean, we don't tip in Europe. I mean, it's not part of our culture at all, um, especially when you think about the fact that we don't have one euro bills, it's coins, so people don't throw right. coins at you, you know? <laughs> so, yeah, it was really intimidating. And I remember, like, uh, you know, the girl who was hosting, she was telling people, like, you better have some cash. If you don't have cash, there's a lady selling singles at the door. And I remember I was like, wow, like, they're really, you know, Get it into yep. the whole tipping thing. And, and I, I mean, again, I'm not complaining. I made quite a lot of money, much more than I would have in Europe. But again, it's really weird because it, I had this whole concept and this whole s story that I wanted to tell, and I didn't get to s tell it all at all because I was literally walking around collecting tips, putting them in a bucket or throwing them in the air, and then just doing the same thing all over again. Yeah. So. Of course, it's it's fun and I enjoy it, but sometimes I wish, and I feel like someone like Sasha Velour maybe brings the European version of drag. Yeah. You know what I mean? Because she, 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 I guess she's 
she can't really dance or anything. So she was like, I'm going to tell you a story. I'm going to use visuals. I'm going to use props. I'm going to use reveals. I'm going to use outfits, wigs, and tell you a story. And that's why I kind of relate to her, I guess, because her kind of drag is very much like what we do in Europe, you know? She, Sasha Valor, I think, is um, a really valuable member of the drag community, um, especially sure. like at this specific time, because she, I mean, I'm not discounting the fact that she won Drag Race, but I want to say that bringing drag from, or like pulling drag from like a performance art to literally just art is, yeah. is very, she like, I feel like has made that sort of uh, gap close a lot more recently. For sure. And I definitely think there's a huge place in the drag community for artful drag separate yeah. from performance drag. For sure. And I mean, I will say again, if you come to Europe and if you go to a drag show, what she does is what you're going to see a lot in, like I've seen crazy, again, like everything she does in her show, I haven't seen her show because every time she was in a city where I was, I was working yeah. or when she, well, she was going to come to Berlin, but then it was canceled because Busted of left. What are you Miss do? Rona, yeah. <laughs> Exactly. But um, like, a lot of the things she does, I've seen in Europe, like the whole, you know, like when she has like the spotlight on her and then it travels with her and then she has doubles of her. I've seen that also here in Europe. So, right. you know, again, storytelling, visuals and stuff, that's what you, that's what we do because people can't tip. So the only thing you're expecting from the audience is just clapping. So people just watch and enjoy and clap and so yeah, again, it's two different kinds of things. I wish more Americans maybe would experience that and maybe transition maybe a little bit more into, cause girl, I've done some shows where I have this whole, I mean, I'll, I'll never come to a show and just lip sync. I always have, even if I'm not using proper visuals, I'm always tell, gonna tell a story with my look and, and it's gonna match the song and the hair is gonna match it as well. I'm gonna do a whole dominatrix thing or I'm gonna do a whole princess thing. And I remember when I was in New York and I love New York drag, but I remember the Queens would just like slap on their face, put on a sweater and go to the DJ booth and be like, um, let's do, I guess, Ariana, whatever. <laughs> so like, they didn't That's even so know. Like, oh I know, <laughs> I mean, literally that happened. So I was like, wait, you don't know what you're lip syncing? She's like, no, whatever, let's do Rihanna. And I was like, okay. And I, get, I came here with my whole BDSM outfit, a face, you know, like, again, like today, very goth, face, you know, yeah. Face. yeah, and and I have this whole thing, I have a whip, and I was planning on, like, whipping the audience members and stuff, and you're just showing, you know, <laughs> showing up, like, in a so, and, and, like, something you brought from Forever 21, yeah. Yeah, so, again, I mean, to, to each their own, and it's great that there's different kinds yeah. of drag, but, and I really do appreciate, like you said, that Sasha is really, like, taking it to the next level hopefully you know she because i know she's doing her world tour but hopefully maybe i know she also has like her tiny show on quibi 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 i can't yeah. remember yeah but again it's just to start hopefully she really takes it to a whole nother level i would really love to have like a like a nightgown tour you know with like yeah. where she, she sure. goes to different cities and has like local performers join her and, and do like a huge thing uh, yeah, that would be great. So I remember I, I actually messaged them to be in Nightgowns, New York when I was traveling um, to the US. I think I never got a reply though, but <laughs> they don't know what they're missing. Yeah. But anyway, so. Um, Do you have any questions yeah. for me? Oh, wait, I have one more question for you. Mm -hmm. um, what are a couple of your favorite pieces that you, your favorite drag pieces that you own? Could be hair, could be a specific makeup <laughs> item, could be a costume. Um, those earrings are literally my obsession lately. I I mean, you can't really, and they're like super simple. Okay. But I fucking for them. I bought them on Etsy and I'm obsessed. And I remember I showed them to my boyfriend and he was like, yeah, I don't really care for them. I've been wearing them every time I do <laughs> them. Um, and I guess my wig, I mean, my wigs, there are so many wigs, like, especially lately, I've, before all of this happened, I placed a bunch of orders for some really nice hair, which you've probably seen on my Instagram now. Um, again, a lot of people are like, how can you afford such hair in a time of crisis? Bitch, I was in line. There was a three month period where I was waiting for my wig, honey. So this was ordered like back in November. 
but yeah, I guess like my hair. Made, yeah. Yeah. So yeah, I guess I would say my hair and those earrings. I mean, there's so many things. It just, I guess, changes, you know, my whole yeah. aesthetic changes. Like I go from like being really dark and goth to being like very fishy woman, Mugler, but then I get tired of that. And then I go back to like mm -hmm. goth. So that's one of the things that I thought that makes you different and unique, I think, because a lot of queens will have like when they first start drag they'll have the period of like self-discovery where they like find their face uh -huh. and then once they find their face it's kind of like that's it right so that's, so that's yeah. one of the things i like about your drag a lot thank you yeah it's i mean i don't know how anyone can do the same makeup over and over again i would give like i literally grow sick of my face every like <laughs> i like, like sometimes i find something out and i'm like oh my god this looks really cute and i'm gonna do it like two eyes or three times and then I grow tired of it and I'm like okay let's move on to the next thing yeah so yeah I mean I do appreciate that someone has their own face but I don't think I've like when you look at my Instagram sometimes it's crazy because you go back and it's only six months but I look so different I used to do like the Trixie Mattel contour like all uh -huh. the way down you know and like the huge cut crease it was just very draggy and then it went to like more fishy now it's like more goth it just evolves all the time, but I mean, yeah, I mean, I guess that's what we do. Like, I don't, I mean, yeah, I guess Sasha Valor and the Drug Race girls, they've found their face and they've really... Yeah, it's more I don't about, know. I think for them, it's more about having a branded aesthetic that mm -hmm. people can recognize. And so it's a little bit harder yeah. for them to just change up their image. Um, yeah, for sure. So do you have any questions for me or, you know, anything regarding sickening? I mean, yeah, like, how, what's happening with you then now that you don't get to <laughs> go to shows and film queens and, like, post about them, you know? Yeah, so um, I am, I'm pretty lucky. Um, so um, just, I mean, buyer beware, I do save these interviews and upload them later to my YouTube channel. <laughs> um, exclusive Ghost Electric Quarantine interview coming okay. soon to YouTube. Um, no. But no. Wait, by the way, what happened to that interview we did at Austin Drag Festival? Was it posted ever? Um, it's not posted yet. So I have an archive. Um, I have an eight terabyte hard drive that I travel with. Okay. And it's full mm -hmm. of, it's like literally full of drag performances and interviews and all this other stuff that um, I just haven't edited yet or uploaded. So um, I'm right. basically diving a lot into that and then uploading all that stuff to my YouTube channel. So um, a lot of that stuff's going to be coming very soon. Um, all right. So that's basically what I've been doing. I've also been, uh, I started doing um, websites for entertainers. Um, and that's uh -huh. so I'm kind of really doubling down on that in particular. Um, I've been trying to get into like the influencer marketing um, by like doing websites for some notable figures in our industry in order to get the word out. Um, so far right. I've done a little over a dozen websites, but I'm really hoping to uh, continue um, to make websites for Queens because I feel like, you know, you know it shouldn't be expensive, time consuming, or, uh, you know, you shouldn't need to put it off just because you think it's, you know, hard or, you know, um, to have a website. And I think it's definitely something that if you do drag full time and if it, if, or if it's an art that you feel passionate about, you should have a website to showcase it. Right. Yeah. I mean, I created a website for, cause I have like a art collective, which, um, are my lights fucking blinking? They're so annoying. Yeah. I have like an art collective and we produce events. We represent artists and stuff. So, and I, I mean, I wasn't, I was with a friend of my boyfriend's who's a graphic designer and webmaster. <laughs> But girl, I mean, I built, basically, I ended up building the mostly 80% of the website myself, having no experience whatsoever. Mm -hmm. And it took me a month and I was working on it every day. It's so much work. Also, because I really wanted everything to be on there from like, again, artist representation to event production, like every kind of event that we've done, our regular ones, our sporadic ones. Anyway, so it's a lot of work for sure. I mean, again, if you're, if you don't know what you're doing, it's a lot of work. And then Money-wise, I don't know how much you're asking for, but I know, like, I've talked to a lot of, like, webmasters, and they're asking for crazy amounts of money, girl. They're, it's, like, 2,000 euros for a website. I'm like, who has the money? Yeah, yeah so, I mean, for, uh, basically, we're gearing ourselves towards 
uh, making these websites for full-time entertainers that uh, basically just want like a one-page site to showcase uh, their right. art. So we're talking this web page has, um, you know, uh, a portfolio about section, a bunch of photos, their regular yeah. bookings and their schedule, mm -hmm. and like maybe a few other things. And that's about it. So it's a big one page long. It's a one pager, but it's a long one pager. Um, so right. for that kind of design, um, basically what I say is, you know, if you want to do a website, I'll have uh, your uh, full draft ready in 72 hours or less for uh, $30. I think that's about 25 Oh, wow. Okay. Um, and so, but, you know, obviously the price goes up from there depending on like how many pages you need it to be, what's on the yeah, website. Sure. But it's not like I, I haven't ever charged. Um, I design websites for other other things as well, like businesses and, and other things. Um, I've never charged more than $200 for a web design. Yeah, and $200 is still very affordable for a website. Like, I mean, I guess I, mean, I, guess I wanted, my website is probably like, a hundred pages altogether because we have them in French and English and everything. But so I guess that's why they were charging so much. But I was like, 2000 euros. Damn. Right. I'm like, yeah, girl. Um, but I, I also can offer that sort of pricing because I do utilize a software that doesn't require a lot of coding. Um, it's, mm -hmm. it's, uh, you know, think of it as like a professional version of like, uh, Wix.com where you kind of let you drag and put everything where you want it. And so then, is it um, it's called, well, mm, trade oh, secrets. Okay. All right. Um, I, okay. can't, I can't have people stealing my gig. All right. All right. Well, I mean, I also use, a soft, I mean, I don't know if it's called a software really, but I don't know. Maybe you've, I used like W, well, WordPress Bakery. Yeah. So it's, it's a lot like that, but it's like a, it's a, like kind of like a self-contained, um, like separate software. Um, and then basically it's like a WYSIWYG. So WYSIWYG is, stands for what you see is what you get. Um, okay. And, and basically when you press upload, it uploads to your server and bam, that's right. your site. Cool. Um, so oh. that's basically what I've been doing. Um, I've been uh, doing my employment search because I've been unemployed for the last two months. Um, so. Are you getting any money from the government at all, like aid, financial aid? Yes, yeah, so I did get um, the twelve. A twelve hundred dollar stimulus that went out to basically all Americans who made less than seventy five thousand last year. So I did get okay. that. That's been helped. That's paid my rent this month, um, and then that's paid for like my groceries. So I'm not right. complaining there. But I also like I have been going a little bit crazy because I do like just like you. I like doing something different all the time, changing up. I like have to have to have like a very varied lifestyle, I guess. That makes mm -hmm. sense. Um, yeah. And so uh, I've been going insane, like sitting in front of a computer like all day, every day. Like what if, if it's just editing videos, doing these websites, like, you know, it doesn't take me very long to edit a video or make a website. So if it's just like consistent, like I'm like, oh, you know? Yeah, yeah, yeah. No, I definitely get that for sure. I mean, I think we're all going to go crazy eventually. Like if everything gets kind of boring, eventually so and we're all stuck here like not really working trying to struggling to make money and yeah i mean even like even if i'm just doing you know youtube to for fun it sometimes it gets kind of repetitive like you know filming mop or drop and, and editing them and it's it's very repetitive yeah. so now i'm like looking for more ways to have fun and be creative and entertain myself and others i guess well, um here's a recommendation yeah, I, though um, there's a ton of companies online, uh, like hundreds of them that have been doing like, um, you know, they've been offering like their training programs for free. Um, uh -huh. um, and so like, um, there's a company Moz, M-O-Z dot com or dot net. Um, they do like SEO search engine optimization. And so I've been doing their course yeah. for free and that's been really fun. Um, I mean, it's like a three thousand dollar course that they're just like putting up for free, and so like I've been, oh, wow. I've been doing like, you know, all these online courses, and I am like, you know, getting my SEO life program. doing all that stuff. So oh you know, I was doing SEO for a living before I did drag. Seriously? Yeah. Well, I was doing basically I was doing copyright like 
like writing content mm -hmm. in French and English translation and SEO for a company. It was so fucking boring. Oh my God. <laughs> but hey, it, it's very useful. I mean, especially in, in this day and age. But yeah, I was doing SEO for a company and then I was doing like, I was writing content for another company. <sighs> Girl. Oh my God. <laughs> So boring, but hey, I mean, again, it's very essential. I mean, yeah. I would know. Now I'm shadow banned from Instagram, so. Oh, tell me more. Yeah, maybe I should have. Maybe I should have thought about better using my hashtags. I guess. No, I don't know. I mean, I don't know. Like my reach has been limited so much that some people have told me that it's because I use the same hashtags all over again, and like they're not relevant to my content. Blah blah. blah. So, having done SEO, I should know better. But I guess I didn't. So maybe I wouldn't be too good at yeah, my job. I, I've been stuck at the same number of followers here for like, I mean, obviously, we were ta talking about the beginning of this call, followers doesn't really matter. But you know, it's also kind of frustrating that we're creating content on a regular basis. And yeah, it's, and like platforms like Instagram, their entire business model for profit is based off of the relying on creators to continually create content. Yeah. And when we create content and put it on the platform, like we're not being rewarded. Don't that. even get me started because I could go on for hours <laughs> because people are like, I mean, I was talking to about this to a friend who is like growing bigger on social media and he, you know, was excited when he grew bigger. He hit like over 10,000 followers and he was really excited and he was like, oh, maybe next year I'll hit like 20,000. And so he's been working so hard and like taking, like literally getting in drag every day and editing for hours like for literally hours and posting a picture and he was like, i don't understand it's not doing well blah, blah blah maybe i should do this maybe i should stop doing selfies maybe i should use photoshop maybe i should use more of this and maybe that and maybe that and maybe i should hashtag i'm like okay so and and then i started talking about it on my on my in my stories i had one day i literally like had a nervous breakdown and because like basically i don't care about the followers it's not even about the followers because again my followers are growing every day i'm basically making 100 followers every day but it's not it doesn't matter to me because what i want is for people who do follow me to see my content and right. i post a picture and maybe 70 percent of the time it reaches not even one percent of my followers. What so, I've like, been doing is here's a hack that I've been doing. Um, I have an automation um, on my mm -hmm. on my platform, and basically, what I um, have is whenever someone follows my account, I send them a DM that says, "Hey, welcome to Sickening Drag Performances. This is what we do. Please consider turning on post notifications." Uh, and then, like, oh, that me, and then that. so it's an automatic DM that gets sent to everyone who follows me. Right. Yeah, but then if you do that, then then don't you open the conversation for people to be able to send you messages like DMs? Because if you message them, then they can send you a message. Yeah. And girl, I can't have someone, I can't be having so I can't be having people like message me. I already have like yeah. Again, can you imagine thirty thousand people messaging me like DMing me? That girl, I cannot imagine. Yeah, I think it's a little bit um, different because like. Um, this whole like sickening spotlight thing that I've been doing is the first occasion in over five years of like doing this brand sickening drag performances that my face has ever really been shown to the people that follow the brand. So being like a brand, I think it's a little bit different as far as that whole VM thing. Right. Um, and yeah, for sure. So for sure. I definitely, definitely see where you're coming from from that. And I definitely, you know. Yeah, because you're, I mean, you're a brand and like, unless you introduce yourself as Reed, then people think it's a brand. So it, you're, it's still neutral. If I message people, then they feel like they know me or maybe we're friends or we're acquaintances. And then they tend to, I mean, I'll say like a lot of people message like DM me and I really appreciate it. Like some of them with really nice messages, but I accept the message reply and I it got to the point where then they just message me like they reply to every story and it gets like, very out of control also i'm a very anal when it comes to notifications so <laughs> same same my notifications or else i just feel like anxious and so it gets to the point where i have people replying to all of my stories just because when they posted a story about me i was like oh thank you for sharing or you know what i mean mm -hmm. uh yeah and then people feel like they know you or maybe they're close to you and then they treat you a certain type of way yeah it's it's 
very weird. So, um, but yeah, going back to the whole Instagram thing, I mean, I've, I have been struggling for a few months, you know, with, with that. And it's not just me, it's a lot of people. And I do agree with you with, because I, I shared a few stories about that, like really being very angry towards Instagram, like me. And it's not just me, it's like people working their asses off. Like they could just be chilling and they're out here, you know, producing content, posting, hashtagging, whatever. And then they're not rewarded for their work. And some right. people were like, well, you wouldn't be where you are for, if it wasn't for Instagram. And I'm like, yeah, that's true. I wouldn't be where I am because Instagram made Ghost Electra. Like I was just Lenny from the block <laughs> and yeah, <laughs> Lenny from the block. Um, and, and yeah, of course I wouldn't be traveling across the world and doing what I do without Instagram. But then at some point also when I got on Instagram, I signed a contract with certain conditions and Instagram has changed you know, they've shuffled the cards so many times. They've changed right. the rules so many times by changing the algorithm without telling us. And, and yeah, again, you're at the point where when you signed up for Instagram, it was that way. It was like, oh, if you post three times a week, if you post stories, then you, you're going to do well. And then it got to the point where there's no magic recipe. There's no magic like, formula, I mean, yeah. I don't know. Like, I mean, even now, it's like when I post a picture, it probably reaches like, like it hits maybe 1.5 thousand likes, which is great. But like when I had half that following, I, I hit even more. I hit like two, 2.5 thousand. Yeah. So it's not about the likes, but still, let's be honest. When I post a picture and I see it's only showed to like 3,000 people, when I have 30,000 followers, I just want people who follow me to see my content. Like if they follow me, there's a reason. So right. if, if they don't see my content, then then what's the point of all of this? You know what yeah, I mean? Literally. So it's very frustrating. I definitely share I'm your I'm taking a liking feeling. to TikTok, but my opinion is a little bit swayed because um, TikTok is now, TikTok is uh, at the point where it's no longer in its like infancy. And now it's like, as a social media platform, it's more in like the adolescent stage. Um, so it's yeah. like before maturity. Um, and basically what we're seeing now, like when a social media platform starts, the engagement is like through the roof. Um, so I actually downloaded and started posting content on TikTok probably about um, like five or so months ago. And yeah. I've grown to 17 and a half K. Um, and it's mostly yeah. because of like five or six videos that went viral. Right. Um, and that's all but like that's what, that's what Instagram does too though it's like you know I've had Instagram for nine years stuff, stuff. but it's like a lot well, more mysterious how you can end up there so it's the whole I like, know yeah the shuffle you know that one of my one of my TikTok transformations got it's got like 800,000 views on TikTok it's kind of crazy to me like almost a million people have seen me and again, the only reason I'm on TikTok is because they sponsored me during DragCon. I don't know if you remember, they were um, a, like a sponsor. Mm -hmm. Last year at DragCon, they were like sponsored. They put money into DragCon. They had a booth and stuff. Right, right, yeah. Um, and then they, they re yeah, well, I guess we missed each other, but I guess we didn't know each other then. Um, and then basically they reached out to me and they were like, hey, we're looking for a bunch of performers from across the world who are going to attend DragCon. To create a TikTok, you have to post like 20 videos and we were being sponsored. So we made a check from that. And the only reason I was on TikTok in the first place is because they were paying me. Now I post videos once every so often. I post like transformations and stuff. I don't get TikTok, but I will say like I posted some Vid I don't know how many followers I have. Literally, I don't care. Like TikTok, <laughs> yeah. I think I have a few, maybe seven, eight thousand or something. I don't know. But again, one of the videos was seen by eight hundred thousand people, and I was like, "Holy shit! Can you imagine? Like, it's almost a million people seeing my face. It's crazy." Yeah. So maybe I should spend a little bit more time on TikTok. I don't know. It's just again, I'm so from that um, sponsored. Thing. Do you have any contacts that work there from like the marketing no. or is it just like a one off? No, because the only person I talked to was uh, like uh, someone from a, another company who was hired by TikTok to, to, to reach out to Queens. Um, and it was a whole big ordeal because a lot of Queens didn't get paid and they were, it was, 
really complicated, but basically like I never talked to anyone from TikTok. It was from another company who's like, what do you call it? Like an influencer. Got it. Yeah. Like a marketing yeah, agency. Do, yeah, exactly. Marketing agency. So that's the only person I talked to. Um, and I don't even know what happened to them. I, I know there was this drama because even I was, they were very late to pay me like maybe two months. And eventually I was like, okay, once again, I gave my time and energy and I'm not getting paid for what I do. And then eventually they, you know, I posted on social media about it and they ended up paying me, but I don't even know if they still work with TikTok really. And then there was this whole deal with like TikTok being fat phobic and homophobic. I know they like, they limit, they limit queer content, which is so weird because why would you sponsor DragCon and hire, literally hire drag queens to post yeah. content if, you know? Yeah, it's a little bit uh, hypocritical. Yeah, well, same with Instagram girl, because I was talking about that. Like, yeah. I'm like, girl, okay, can we talk about that? Instagram's like, yeah, we're going to remove likes because like people are struggling. Like it's it's really creating this whole depression among young people right. to feel, you know, because they tested, I think in Australia and maybe Canada, like removing the likes altogether. So you can see who liked your picture. And if you want, you can count them one by one, but there's no like number, number of like on a yeah. picture. And I was like, that's so fucking hypocritical because the only reason people are, you know, obsessing over likes is because your fucking algorithm, sorry, I don't know if I can swear on, on this. Oh, yeah, your, effing, um, your effing algorithm is, you know, limiting people's reach and fucking up with all of that. Like if, if you went back to what it was originally, which if I remember correctly, it was when you would get on your Instagram, the first post you would see was the most recent one. And then it was like, yeah, in on, chronological on. order. Yeah. And if you go back to that, then we're all fine, honey. No, you decided to do this whole thing because you want to make money. And then you're out there saying, yes, we're going to remove likes because young people are struggling with depression from... Girl, you, you know exactly why they're struggling because that's what you want. You want to give them a little bit and then to take everything back. And it's, and it's crazy because it works on me too. Like, I'm not going to lie. I posted a picture a few days ago and I did really well. And I was like on Instagram checking my likes and my comments constantly. Like I posted an IGTV and it, it has like reached 25,000 views. And, you know, I'm like out here always checking and it, it feels good. And then when it doesn't do well, I'm like complaining and talking shit. And I'm like, I, ugh, I should fucking quit Instagram. Yeah. But that's what they want you to do. That's, they want you on their platform at all times, trying to figure right. out why you do well or why you do do well. And, you know, keep posting, hoping that it's going to do well. Anyway, it's, yeah, and it's I'm lucky lot. that, yeah, it's a lot. And I'm lucky enough that my boyfriend is not on any kind of social media whatsoever. And, you know, to him, it's, to him, it's just nonsensical. He's like, I don't understand this, like, why you spend so much time obsessing over this. And it's true. Like, sometimes I I feel like I should just unplug, you know? Yeah. So. Well, thank you so much for um, doing this with me today. I know you t uh, don't, sure. didn't have to get to, into drag a whole two hours early um, or anything <laughs> like that. Um, I would definitely love to chat with you more about websites and definitely give you some pointers as far as video editing yeah. goes. But once again, thank you so much, uh, Miss okay. Ghost. So is it, do you go by just Ghost or is it Ghost Electra? No, it's Ghost Electra. Well, when people call me, they can call me Ghost because that's like my first name. But okay. basically I used to be just Ghost and Electra was just for Instagram. Um, and, but then it's a branding thing because then if people sure. type Ghost, drag queen and, the, and I never show up so yeah eventually I was like you know what I'm gonna go with ghost electra if people type ghost electra they find my youtube channel my instagram so sure. ghost to like Friday. okay well thank you so much for your time today and uh coming in and expressing all of your opinions and, <laughs> <laughs> and all, all of them the opinions stuff. Um, yeah. but I hope you have a good show tonight um I thank will you. definitely uh try to tune into that and uh uh yeah, have a great week and hopefully we all stay safe in this quarantine. <laughs> yeah, thank you for having me. And yeah, again, let's talk soon. And everyone who watched, thank you for watching. Again, I'm going to plug it, but in an hour, we have Tech Noir online on my Twitch, twitch.tv slash Ghost Electra. We have music and drag shows for six hours and it's free. I mean, feel free to donate, but it is free. So yeah, I'll see you tonight. Okay, I see a bunch of comments, so I guess people are going to tune in. All right. Thank you so much. You have a wonderful Thank show. Thank you, Bye. Talk to you soon. Bye.
Thank you so much, everyone, for tuning in. This has been Sickening Spotlight, Sickening Spotlight Episode 11. I'm your host, Electric Reed. You can find me on all my social media, Electric Reed, uh, YouTube, Facebook, Instagram, Snapchat, LinkedIn. If you're crazy, this has been Sickening Drag Performances. You can find Sickening Drag Performances online, Facebook, YouTube, Instagram, and Twitch at Sickening Drag Performances. You can also find us on Byte app and TikTok. And our tag is just Sickening Drag Queens. Thank you so much. And you guys have a wonderful rest of your day. Stay sickening.